Trouble with Harry was a 1955 Alfred Hitchcock film in color. And I have to say, this is possibly one of the most cinematically beautiful films by Hitchcock I've ever seen. Or just seen, period. Now, I'm talking specifically about the visuals. This is set in the countryside in Vermont. And it's like Hitchcock just drinks in this beautiful autumn scenery. Often the camera will just sit and hold a scene with all of the rich hues of autumn. And even though the subject matter itself of the film is comical and strange, so much of the merit of this film to me was in the visuals. But let's get into the film and talk about that because it is something. I think the film could best be described as a black comedy. It feels both comical and surreal, particularly in how everyone seems to react about the discovery of a dead body up on a hilltop. So we open up and there's a little boy going around with his toy gun. He's off in the woods. He's Arnie, played by a very young Jerry Mathers, you know, from Leave it to Beaver. He hears some noises and he's the first one to find the dead body of this well-dressed guy. He's just laying on the ground there. He runs off to tell his mom. We cut to the character Captain Albert Wiles. He's played by Edmund Gwen of Miracle on 34th Street. And I like him a great deal as an actor. In my review of the film, Them, it was the one with the giant ants. I mentioned that as an actor, he sort of has this John Hammond vibe from Jurassic Park. You know, kind of this gentle, soft-spoken old guy. He's great here. He's off in the woods, he's got his gun, I think it's like a 22. I don't really know guns, but he's talking to himself about his love of hunting, and then he sets off to find the plump rabbit that he shot. He finds a couple things that he managed to shoot, like a tin can, a no hunting sign, and then he finds the body with a blood stain on his head. And he suspects here he accidentally shot the guy. He sees a letter in his coat pocket saying that his name is Harry, and that's all we know at this point. Then the character Miss Gravely shows up, played by Mildred Natwick. She doesn't seem all that shocked to see Captain Wiles dragging off the body to hide it. She's a little alarmed, but as the captain realizes he might be in trouble here, he kind of starts getting cozy and tells her how much he appreciates being able to tell someone who is so warm and understanding, and she seems pleased and invites him over for blueberry muffins and coffee and elderberry wine and then she heads home so they've got this cheerful quasi romantic dialogue going on meanwhile there's harry still laying dead on the ground the little kid arnie he returns with his mother jennifer rogers played by a very young shirley mclean i believe this is one of her first movies and her reaction is even more puzzling her reaction on seeing the body is very blasé, she says, Harry, thank Providence, the last of Harry. We, the viewer at this point, are going, what on earth? And meanwhile, Captain Wiles, he's kind of behind a tree, just listening and watching what's going on. They leave, and soon after, this Dr. Greenbow character walks by, played by Dwight Marfield. He's kind of this geeky guy with glasses, reading a book. He's got the book right up to his face. He walks, trips over Harry's foot, gets up, puts his glasses back on, and moves on like it's no big deal. Doesn't, doesn't even notice the body. And everyone's reaction is just so strange to the presence of the dead guy. At no point does anybody discover it and call the cops. For instance, right after him comes this homeless-looking guy, played by Barry Macholm, and he sees how well Harry's dressed, steals his shoes, and then runs off. And the captain's still watching all of this from behind a tree. And we, the viewer, it's just, I guess it's supposed to be funny and weird, but okay, whatever. Back in town, we now cut over to John Forsyth's character. You know John Forsyth from Dynasty back in the 1980s. And he plays a character, Sam Marlowe, who is this, this carefree artist who shows up singing. He's got a new abstract painting under his arm, and he brings it to be sold at this little cozy roadside stand, one run by Mrs. Wiggs, played by Mildred Dunnock. Her son, meanwhile, is nearby repairing an old car. He's Deputy Sheriff Calvin Wiggs, played by Royal Dono. His character will be a little bit important later in the film. So Mrs. Wiggs adds Sam's art into her roadside stand. She's got this cozy little country shop. It's loaded with all the 
bright colored inventory and Miss Gravely pops in at this point to buy a coffee mug for her lunch with the captain. And Sam is talking to her about looking more youthful and in the process completely ignores an old guy who has stopped to buy one of his paintings and also misses the Alfred Hitchcock cameo. So a little bit later, Sam is walking to the hilltop to do some art, coincidentally right near dead Harry. Of course, he sees the feet kind of sticking out as he's trying to like, you know, draw a landscape. And he asks, hey, would you mind getting out of my picture? And then walking over, examines the body, realizes he's dead, then proceeds to draw him. So yeah, Sam is just as weird as everybody else in town. The captain, meanwhile, he's still up on the hillside. He's asleep behind a tree. He walks over to watch. And then Sam starts going on about how maybe it was just destiny. And it all was meant to be waxing philosophical as he continues to draw the dead guy. Following by some chatter about the captain and his upcoming date with Miss Gravely. Meanwhile, Dr. Greenbow, for a second time, saunders by, he's still reading his book, trips over Harry's body again, gets up, and walks on. The captain returns to town in time to see Deputy Wiggs talking to another police officer, much to the captain's alarm. And here we slowly are starting to build the tension theme of the film is are the police ever going to kind of figure out what's going on do they know that there's like a dead body they have to go look for whatever sam goes to talk to jennifer rogers and finds out that harry the dead guy is actually her former husband and she doesn't seem at all that bothered by the fact he's dead she's a little bit daffy and she tells the story of being married to harry and getting to this point where she had to bop him on the head with a milk jug and just left him staggering off into the mountains Captain, meanwhile, goes to visit Miss Gravely. There's just so many weird and surreal details. I just, I kind of want to share it all. But it's as I go through talking about this film, I realize, boy, this is just crazy in a Twin Peaks sort of weird way. Anyhow, the captain, he has the lunch with Miss Gravely. And then we get to the point where as they're talking, she seems emphatic about getting Harry buried quickly. And then we get to this theme that kind of carries on through the film of burying Harry on the mountaintop and unburying him. So we cut to Sam and the captain. They have just buried him. He's in the ground. And then the captain realizes he fired three bullets at a can, a sign, and a rabbit. And he didn't actually kill Harry. So they dig him up again. And then they get the body up, and then Sam starts to suspect that Harry didn't die from the shot, but instead, a blow to the head. I'm not sure how he figured that out. And I also wonder, how did they dig him up without actually digging, like, into him? I'm overanalyzing it now. Whatever. Sam is thinking more about it and decides it would be better if Harry was buried and out of the way. So back in the ground he goes. Later, Miss Gravely comes to visit the captain at his house, and she confesses that she was the one to smack Harry on the head, and yes, she wants to dig him back up again. Sam has coffee with Jennifer, who of course feels wrong about Harry being buried. Miss Gravely and the captain, they all show up there, and after saying that they unburied him again, Sam says that the murder investigation would be troubling, and all of Jennifer's past would come out. So they all agree to go back and bury him again again. At this point, I've completely lost count of how many times they have buried and unburied Harry. On the way back, Miss Wiggs runs to tell Sam that, and Sam and the whole group, that somebody wants to buy all of his paintings. And he meets with this eclectic millionaire character, agrees to sell them all, but in the form of gifts for all of his friends. And then he proposes marriage to Jennifer, who he just literally met that day. Okay, the deputy then shows up and mentions that the homeless guy stole shoes from a corpse and everyone leaves for the night a little bit nervous because they're starting to wonder if this deputy is catching on. While on the phone, this deputy, he starts to see the edge of a picture that Sam drew. Looking more closely, he sees it's a picture of Harry and he's basically realized he's drawn a picture that meets the full description of this character that's gone missing. 
So back at Jennifer, Sam realizes that in order to marry her, they have to prove Harry died since he's still technically married to Jennifer. So they sneak back up again, dig him up again. And once he's out, for the third time, this Dr. Greenbow walks by, sees the body, and they explain that they just found him. Dr. Greenbow asks how he died, but because it's dark, it's nighttime, nobody really knows for sure. So they agree they'll have to bring the body to town so he can do an examination. They bring Harry's body back to Jennifer's house. They start cleaning up his clothing. Deputy, however, shows up with that portrait to ask Sam about it. He's very suspicious now and how he happened to be able to draw a sketch that met the description of the missing guy. The body is meanwhile right around the corner in a bathtub and of course the doctor also shows up at this same point and you know what you got to see how it wraps up for yourself. It is loopy, it's crazy and I think I overanalyzed this story just a little bit but hey my three fans probably don't care anyway. So some quick closing thoughts on the film. This was a trip. I enjoyed it, but it was a little out there. And I think I lean more towards the heavily suspense-driven Alfred Hitchcock films, like, say, Rebecca or Shadow of a Doubt, ones that keep you guessing and wondering from the very beginning. Here it's just a dark comedy where everybody acts so crazy about this dead hairy guy. And yes, eventually there are reveals of why Everyone is so strange in their behavior, but it's just so surreal. And you know, just in thinking about this film, I think I've learned to appreciate, and you know, a lot of the films I've watched, is when you are in a bizarro place, when everyone and everything is so crazy, it really helps when you have sort of the, like the everyman or the every woman character, who's sort of the normal one that you can associate with to help you drive through and navigate through the weirdness. You know, someone you can relate to and identify with, but there's really no one like that here. I mean, everyone in this film is crazy. <laughs> it was uh, unlike anything I've seen from Hitchcock before. And granted, I haven't seen quite everything he's done just yet, but this one was trippy. But going back to what I said initially, the cinematography is gorgeous. Hitchcock will hold a frame for some of the most just beautiful, rich, colorful foliage, and it's hard to recognize that in a balance of the beauty of nature with the weirdness of the story, but somehow he makes it work. Also noteworthy is Bernard Herrmann's musical soundtrack, which was wonderful. It's a sweet and charming melody, and it's very memorable through the film. And yeah, this is the same Bernard Herrmann who also scored Hitchcock's Psycho, you know, wee, wee, wee. But the main theme here is very beautiful and peaceful, and it recurs through the film. Really enjoyed that. Trouble with Harry is definitely one of the stranger black comedies I've seen, and one of the weirder ones from Hitchcock, but it's worth checking out. And now, just for kicks, I'm just going to include some stills of that Vermont scenery from the film with some free YouTube music, because why not? <laughs> 